I'm Mehdi Hassan. President Biden will be selling his $2 trillion infrastructure and jobs plan this week. And surprise, Republicans don't like it. Many of them have been using the same refrain they used to bash the COVID relief plan, saying the plan is not about infrastructure at all. Some Republicans argue only 5 to 7% of the proposal is actually for infrastructure. That claim, by the way, got three Pinocchios from the Washington Post fact checkers today. But some of the Sunday shows ended up echoing that GOP talking point. This bill includes a lot that is not traditionally considered infrastructure. If President Biden wants to make this bipartisan, why not focus this bill on what everyone can support? Roads, bridges, airports, rural broadband. $213 billion for housing, $400 billion for taking care of the elderly and disabled. Brian, uh, those may well be worthy projects, but they're not infrastructure. You're really s s stretching the word beyond all meaning. Only about 5% of the funding goes to infrastructure. Can you honestly call this a focus on building roads and bridges? But the Biden administration says infrastructure is absolutely about more than roads and bridges. Because it is. And they were admirably lockstep in their messaging this weekend. I think it's important that we upgrade our definition of infrastructure, one that meets the needs of a 21st century economy. I think we really need to update the, what we mean by infrastructure for the 21st century. We believe that pipes are infrastructure because you need water to live. We need to make sure that we have broadband. Infrastructure investment has to include looking to the future. Railroads seemed futuristic and then we actually built them. Now they're considered traditional infrastructure. So what exactly does the president's expansive American jobs plan cover? There's $621 billion for transportation, the stuff you typically think of when it comes to infrastructure. There's $111 billion to replace pipes and upgrade water systems, $100 billion to improve our power grids, another $100 to expand broadband internet, $300 billion to revitalize manufacturing. And there's a number of items that are part of Biden's expanded definition of infrastructure 213 billion for affordable and sustainable housing 40 billion to upgrade public housing a combined 137 billion for public schools and community colleges 25 billion for childcare facilities 400 billion in care for elderly and the disabled and there's also 100 billion in workforce development those kinds of items could also be called human infrastructure it's a progressive term, a recent term referring to the structures that can help boost the economy and let people participate in it. For example, as Vox puts it, someone isn't going to be able to use that new road or bridge to get to work if they have to stay home to take care of their kids or their parents. President Biden is set to roll out a second part of his infrastructure plan soon, which will reportedly focus more investment in human infrastructure. Look. It's a very different approach than the one we've seen for decades. One that rejected big government spending across the board. Bloomberg opinion columnist Noah Smith argues the age of Reagan is over. The age of Biden has begun. He writes that the Reagan policies focused on tax cuts, deregulation and welfare cuts weren't working. But it took COVID and the insanity of the Trump administration to push us over the edge and make us realize that big changes were needed. Smith calls those changes Bidenomics which focuses on cash benefits, think of the checks, care jobs, and these investments. In other words, it leans all the way into the traditionally left-wing idea that government and government spending is a force for good. And we're seeing President Biden, of all people, who very much bills himself as a centrist and moderate, very open to that way of thinking. Here's how the Washington Post put it. How Joe Biden tamed the left listen a lot and back many of the policies that activists have long wanted. But if you ask me, it's not that Biden tamed the left, it's that the left, or the left's view of government, finally, deservedly, has been recognized as necessary, as vital even, for this crisis-ridden moment in American history. Joining me now is economics professor and former Labour secretary under President Bill Clinton, Robert Reich. Robert, thanks so much for coming back on the show. What do you make of the Biden administration's approach uh, to infrastructure, to expand this definition of infrastructure? Is that the right approach? Is their messaging working? 
well, not only is it the right approach, uh, Betty, and the messaging is working. I mean, all the polls are showing a majority of Americans very, very supportive of all this. Uh, but it also is appropriate to the middle of the 21st century where we're heading. I mean, the old definition of infrastructure, which was roads and bridges and kind of the concrete, uh, was fine. And that needs to be addressed. But you also have all of this uh, sort of human capital uh, that we've got to develop. Another way of actually looking at this is to say that Reagan pioneered uh, trickle-down economics. That is, you give tax breaks and you make corporations more profitable. The idea was everybody, everybody would benefit because the benefits would trickle down. That never really happened. What Biden is trying is sort of bottom-up economics. You invest in infrastructure properly understood broadly understood, broadband and, and roads and bridges, but also schools and, and home care, all of the things that people need to be productive in the future. And that will generate not only a more robust economy, but also a fairer economy. Fair economy is very important, as you and others have pointed out for many years. Uh, Robert, you make an interesting argument in an op-ed for The Guardian. You say it's smart politics for Biden to sort of lay low in terms of the big sell on infrastructure, to keep the language around it bland. Why? Uh, well, I think that the country is so, so you know, angry right now at each other. I mean, there's so much divisiveness, and that is largely, not entirely, but largely a, a, a kind of Trump, uh, kind of uh, what, a legacy of Trump. Uh, what Biden wants to do is kind of keep the temperature down. And so he's not drawing a great deal of attention to, for example, uh, climate change and the environment, a big part of the infrastructure package. But he's talking about infrastructure itself, which is, let's face it, a little bit boring. I mean, it used to be a punchline. Remember, under the Trump administration, <laughs> there'd be an infrastructure yeah. week every three months. Uh, we're now having a real infrastructure week. Uh, and, uh, and, and I do think yes. that the, the, the low, the, 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 the tendency of Biden to kind of keep everything low gauge uh, and not lofty is intentional. So... Some breaking news, Robert, this evening. Chuck Schumer, Senate Majority Leader, says the Senate parliamentarian has ruled that Democrats can use the budget reconciliation process twice. Um, that means infrastructure can go through under economic rules, doesn't need to worry about, uh, Schumer doesn't need to worry about getting 10 Republicans, this whole filibuster rule that we've talked about on this show. But of course, that helps you with infrastructure. It doesn't solve the issue of HR1 or S1 as it is in the Senate, the democracy bill. It doesn't help you with gun control or gun reform bills. So that issue is still there and the filibuster is still a roadblock. Uh, exactly. And interestingly, Mehdi, every time you talk to Ron Klain or Biden or anybody else uh, in the White House about when is it that we're going to see gun control or the uh, uh, kind of democracy for the people act or any kind of other major controversial reform, what they say back is, well, it's a matter of timing. And I think what they really mean is they want to get not only this particular infrastructure bill through, uh, they already got their $1.9 trillion American survival bill through. Uh, they want to get enough momentum so that the economy is booming, so that the coronavirus is behind us. And then when they yeah. do, they may have the political heft to do a lot of other things. Yeah, and I, I understand that argument. Of course, time is not on their side, given what's going on in Georgia and Texas and other states when it comes to the assault on voting rights. But you and I both agree the filibuster has to go. It's just a matter of when, not if. Let me circle back to the economy, Robert. Do you agree with Bloomberg's Noah Smith, who says the era of Reagan is over now, given Biden's big, bold proposals? And is this Bidenomics? Is it radically different to what Barack Obama or even your former boss, President Bill Clinton, did? Well, it is radically different from what Bill Clinton. I mean, when, when we started the Clinton administration, remember, the big issue was the deficit. And we had to bring down the deficit. Everybody, yes. including Joe Biden, said you've got to bring down the deficit. Uh, and a lot of people were worried about inflation. 
Uh, and a lot of people said we've got free trade is very, very important. I mean, you know, the Biden, the Brit, the, the Clinton administration uh, was very much it was the first Democratic administration after Ronald Reagan. Uh, and it was really very much in the shadow of Reagan and Reaganomics. Uh, and even yes. then, when you go on to, uh, uh, you know, the the uh, Biden's own uh, when he was vice president to Barack Obama, uh, even there, uh, there were certain kind of assumptions in place uh, that were, I think, quite outdated by then. Uh, Biden is free. I mean, Biden yeah. basically is saying we are in a new a new kind of economy pre Ronald Reagan. And I'm not going to be bound by the same old conventional notions. Uh, which is very, very so, important right now. So, so let me ask you this. You mentioned Biden saying he won't be bound by Reagan, but you're also saying that Biden was the guy as vice president under Obama who embraced that Reagan settlement as a senator during the Clinton administration, also insisted on uh, balancing the budget. So are you surprised to see Joe Biden doing all this progressive stuff. The Joe Biden who was close to Wall Street, nicknamed the senator from MBNA because of all his credit card donors in Delaware. And now all of this in his first 100 days, surprising? It's amazing. I mean, it really is surprising. I, I was one of those who thought of Biden not only as a centrist, but I thought, well, it, you know, he'll be very nice and he'll he'll take charge and he'll be a calming influence. But he's not going to do anything particularly radical. Uh, he's not going to do anything particularly big. Uh, and look what we have. We have two of the largest and, in some sense, most radical pieces of legislation, one already through, another coming soon, and it's going to go through on reconciliation. Joe Manchin may stop it. May, you know, he's going to have a lot of bargaining leverage, uh, those conservative Democrats. But still, you know, B Joe Biden turns out to be much more like Franklin D. Roosevelt than anybody, anybody who followed his career would have assumed. Yeah, definitely, if you followed his career. I'm as uh, surprised as you are, but also delighted. Um, the thing is, let's just not get carried away. Joe Biden plans to pay for his jobs plan by increasing the corporate tax rate from 21 to 28 uh, percent. These tax hikes, of course, don't fly with Republicans, broadly speaking. But according to The Wall Street Journal, some Democrats aren't thrilled with a corporate tax hike either. They're looking at gas taxes or more borrowing uh, to pay for things. A morning consult poll shows that more than half of Americans do support tax hikes to support infrastructure. And yet I look at the big picture and I look at this whole, we're still having this pay for debate. How do we pay for this? Uh, a sign that Republican uh, right wing talking points still dominate our economic discourse, even now, even after the Republicans ran through a $2 trillion tax cut that was not paid for. Especially when you're dealing with infrastructure and all of these public investments, maybe that I mean, the whole yes. notion, the whole idea of a public investment is that it's going to grow the economy in the future. And so logically, you don't have to pay for it now because the economy is going to be that much larger. Uh, it, you know, it, and, and it is ironic. Uh, I, I think, though, that what Joe Biden is doing, and this is a really careful political calculation, is he's saying we're going to go after uh, just increase the corporate tax rate, not even as much as it was before Trump. I mean, we're just going to increase it slightly to pay for all this infrastructure. And most Americans think that's right. Most Americans are very much in favor of that. This, again, uh, is, uh, is yeah. sort of this ironic combination of a very radical uh, president I, I, in terms of a, an agenda, but quite modest in terms of the, the details or, or so, how people understand what he's doing. So let me just jump in because we're out of time, but I do want to ask you this. You mentioned Joe Manchin. You mentioned these corporate tax rates. We have a Trump set corporate tax rate, as you say, of 21 percent. Joe Manchin says he'll agree to 25 percent. Joe Biden's proposing 28 percent. Bernie Sanders wants to take it back to 35 percent. Where do you stand on this? What's the right level of taxation for big corporations that traditionally avoid so much tax year after year? Well, the big irony is that you've got, you know, today a, a report that 55 giant corporations paid zero taxes last year. 55 giant corporations paid nothing. Yeah. I mean, if anything, taxes are, you know, these companies are way undertaxed. I mean, we, well, we ought to close all of the loopholes, make sure there is a minimum corporate tax of whatever, you know, 25, 30 percent, whatever it is. There ought to be every corporation has a minimum tax, period. Yes, 100% agree with you. We're out of time. I wish we could carry on this discussion. Fascinating stuff. Uh, Robert Rush, thank you as ever for your insights. Appreciate it.
Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.